Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of AM Minnesota. Been looking forward to this for quite a while because well, we always enjoy our observances here in Faribault Memorial Day because, you know, I think it's cool that we live in a community that has observed this since 1869. I mean, the history is incredible. Speaking of history, we got Mel Sanborn in studio. He's from the Cannon City Cemetery Association. They're celebrating their sesquicentennial this year. He's going to give us some details about that, along with John McDonough. You are the president of the Central Vets Association, right, John? Yes, that's right, Corey. How cool is that? <clears throat> when you were a little boy, <laughs> you said, I'm going to be the president of the Central Veterans Association. I always dreamed of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that would be quite an honor. Now, they're in charge of this program, right? Right, we do uh, we do the Memorial Day celebration and we also do Veterans Day. Plus, the uh, Central Vets does the honor guard at all the funeral, all the military funerals. So, can you tell me some more about the veterans? As well? this is comprised of a lot of. I didn't bring my program in here like. Uh, Central Vets is comprised of VFW members, American Legion members, Sons of the American Legion, and uh, Legion Auxiliary. So we have uh, we meet once a month. We have two major functions each year. Uh, we've got a meeting tonight just to wrap up things for Monday. We'll have a meeting in uh, probably sometime in June, and we'll start looking for candidates for our uh, Veterans Day ceremonies. Now, this year we've got uh, Larry Kokoski, who's here with us today. He's our honored combat vet. We've got Bob Rindy, who's a Grand Marshal, and <clears throat> Elmo Weistead will be the honorary Grand Marshal. Unfortunately, yeah. those two gentlemen couldn't join us, but Larry's here. Yeah, uh, they're both World War II vets, so they're... Getting up uh, there in years, yeah. They they both get around real good. Uh, Bob's in a wheelchair, but he can get out of it and get into a car. But uh, <clears throat> he said he didn't want to be on the radio. Well, that round head? <laughs> well, it wouldn't bite or anything. It's kind of painless, actually. So, Larry... Before I go into my market update, can you give me a little of your background? And congratulations, by the way, for being the honored combat veteran. Well, I thanks to John. You know, uh, you asked me about six months ago if I if I wanted to be the honorary combat veteran, and uh, I had to think about it a little bit because uh, you know Vietnam sometimes is for us vets it's kind of hard to talk about. You know, so uh, I thought about it a little while and. Uh, about a month ago, or maybe even two months, uh, called again, and uh, yeah, I decided that uh, it would be a pleasure, you know, because uh, <coughs> to uh, be that combat veteran and uh, how how great it is to, you know, uh, fight for our country, you know, and and be and be that honorary vet. Now you grew up in. I made a mistake. It was my fault, people. <coughs> You've heard about this, right, Larry? You grew up in North Morristown. That is correct. <laughs> Not Morristown. North Morristown. That is correct. Yeah, you just got to make that very clear. <laughs> and then you graduated in '61. Is that right? Yeah, I graduated in 1961, and uh, I worked in the cities for a while until I until I got drafted in. Uh, 1965, and uh, from there I uh, did my basic training in uh, uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and from there I went to Fort uh, Special Troops in uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. You were in the Army? I was in the Army, yes. Okay. Mel, did you do any military service? No, I, <coughs> excuse me, I did not get into I just need service. you really close to that mic. I did not get into the service. I flunked my... Army physical. Oh, you deferred. flunked your army physical. Well, I don't know that you'd be too sad about that, but maybe you are. Well, you know, most people want to give service to their country. A lot of my good friends went to Vietnam, and I'm happy that they were able to serve. Yeah, I just, I really need you. For protecting. I need you really close to that mic, if you would, please, Mel. Should I repeat what I said? Yeah, I didn't quite catch it. Okay, I didn't get into the service. I failed my army physical. And, uh, but a lot of my good friends went into Vietnam. Most came back. 
Okay. Well, that's good to know. Anyway, we're going to visit about their, they're doing their sesquicentennial celebration at their cemetery out in Cannon City. How cool is that? Again, Memorial Day is Monday. Since 1869, this community, Faribault, which was deemed the city of flying flags by a U.S. Congress a number of years back, can't remember exactly when, but it's been a number of years since it's been dubbed the city of flying flags by one of our senators, U.S. senators. Anyway, been observing Memorial Day here in Faribault since 1869. Now when did that cemetery start? In 1867. So a couple years even before that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's quite a bit of history. Now I asked you before we went on the air, do you have a record of the first plot in there? I'm just I curious. Do not. Um, I've got a list of the veterans. We have 52 veterans. How many buried total? there? burials do you have there? I do not know. But 52 Possibly. veterans. Mm -hmm. Probably all wars represented? The earliest one that we could find is from the War of 1812. That's pretty early. And we have, I think, 23 <laughs> from the Civil War, and the others are from subsequent wars. So 23 from the Civil War? I think so. Well, that's quite a few, because, well, Kansas City Cemetery is not that big, right? It's uh, about three acres. Are you the president of the association? No, I'm the secretary. Who's the president? Rodney Little. Okay. Uh, he lives over near Lonsdale, but I live in Cannon City. So are you guys I'm planning a special observance on Monday? What are you going to do? Well, it, it's a, a very simple. We don't have a special speaker. Uh, we have um, a few songs. Uh, oftentimes, um, Steve Bondi from Nurstrand leads our music uh, with trumpet. Uh, Don and Judy Chester live in the area. They're on the board. Uh, they provide special music. Kathleen Connie, uh, her father is buried there. She sometimes provides special music. And the rest are uh, recitations, um, Gettysburg Address uh, in Flanders Fields, things of that sort. So who does that? pass a, a flyer around and ask somebody to volunteer. Oh, okay. The old-fashioned. jump in. Yeah. The old-fashioned, yeah. You were just about to say that most people don't <laughs> jump to the... Well, I, I was going to add, too, um, the program um, it goes back 100 years. It was, um, there was a Civil War veteran that approached a teacher back in the 19-teens. Uh, her name was Chloe Gogstadter. Uh, called Polson, and um, he asked if they could students could provide a program. So the kids from the school marched about, an, uh, about a mile, brought flowers and flags and decorated the, the veterans' graves, conducted their program, went back to the school for a, a final picnic before the end of the school year. And then the school closed in 1970, and since then the Cannon City um, Cemetery Board has uh, conducted the programs. Now, I'm not sure how long the Central Park program has been going on. Um, I'm going to have to see if I can get our good friend Susan Garwood over at the Rice County Historical Society to research some of this. In fact, at one time, I know this isn't the original grandstand. The original one burned, and this replaced it. Again, I don't know the year time frame, so we'll have to see if we can get that information. But since 1869, Faribault has been observing it. Don't you think that's cool, John, that we live in a yeah. community? Yeah, that? I do. We get a lot of support <coughs> from the community here, and we really appreciate it. You know, it takes a lot of a lot of work to put this stuff together. And I'd like to say a little bit about our other two. Uh, yep. The Grand Marshal is uh, Bob Rendy. He's a World War II vet. Uh, originally from Faribault, uh, joined the Army when he first got out of high school and uh, was stationed in the South Pacific. When he got discharged, he stayed in California and got married. He and his wife were, were both teachers. Uh, they didn't have any children, so in the summer they traveled, traveled quite a bit. And after his wife passed, he uh, moved back to Faribault. He lives out at Faribault Senior Living now. And uh, he went on the honor flight here. I think it was, was it May 9th? The honor flight went to Washington, D.C. And uh, Wendy Zabel, who's president of the Ladies Auxiliary, she was, she escorted him. She went out there with him. 
She said it was really a nice deal, except it rained all the time they were out there. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, but uh, have you seen the World War II Memorial, John? Have um, you been to? No, I've been to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington D.C., but I haven't. I haven't been to the uh, World War II one. Well, yeah, I have too. The one with the, the guys raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, if you want to see something that's really impressive, watch the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That's uh, about the most precision. And they got so many steps that they march, doing about face and march back. And the rules are, if it's stormy, raining, really stormy, you don't have to do it. But they've never missed. That's the dedication these guys have. They, uh, they're on the job 24-7. Under so any even out there in hailstorms, you're saying? Hailstorms, snowstorms, ice storms, rainstorms. They just, they've never missed since they started doing it. But our other uh, uh, honorary grand marshal is Elmo Weistead. Uh, he's originally from North Dakota. And he's uh, going to be 89 his next birthday. He joined the Army right out of high school, right at the end of World War II. And uh, when he got out, he took advantage of the GI Bill and went to, went to college and become a pharmacist. But during college, he was in ROTC, so he was commissioned a second lieutenant. So he spent five years in the, uh, in the Army Reserve as a commissioned officer. Uh, he passed commander of the American Legion. He was commander while they were in the process of trying to purchase the new building that they're in. Oh, now. okay, the old roller rink. Yeah. It was a roller rink when it was first built, and the Legion, if you remember, was across the street, up a block. It was down by the Daily News. Right next, I think right next to the Daily yep. News, within a couple buildings of it. And Elmo was, uh, uh, had a big part in obtaining the new building and paying the mortgage off pretty quick. He, he's pretty proud of everything he did there, and of course, we're all glad that he was there to do it because we've really got a nice facility down there now. <coughs> Elmo lives up in uh, Milestone up on 14th Street. They're both going to join us at the courthouse and they're both going to ride in the parade. Uh, and as far as I know, they'll both be on stage with you. By the way, Gordy's <coughs> also offered to MC the uh, festivities at Central Park after the parade again. We really appreciate that, Gordy. Yeah. <coughs> well, thanks for asking. It's a quite yeah. Then after that, we go down to the Legion for lunch. Um, then we have uh, the Veterans Memorial in Shieldsville is having a Civil War reenactment at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Honor Guard goes to the Shieldsville Cemetery at 145. So I'd also like to uh, mention the Boy Scouts. I think it's Troop 306. They'll be there helping us out at the courthouse. And, uh, they usually, <coughs> they usually come in early and if there's anything that doesn't look right, they'll pick it up, leaves and stuff like that. Uh, forgot to mention them last year, so this year we're going to start doing it today. That's okay. <laughs> now, and they do a lot of good work too. They do. They mm -hmm. help, I know, with the raising of the flag, yep. don't they? They if present right. the flags. We'll probably have these uh, honored vets raising the flags, but the Boy Scouts will present them to them. <coughs> Uh, Mike Fitzpatrick furnishes the sound system for us uh, at the courthouse. From uh, Shieldsville, right? Mike's from Shieldsville. He was real active in, in getting that uh, memorial built out there. And he helped with the sound out at the traveling wall when he came here last summer. Did a great job. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just want to mention those people and, of course, Gordy, who does MCs our show at Central Park. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, we enjoy it. It's uh, something that we should do. We, everybody should observe Memorial Day in the proper fashion. Well, these these guys that have gone before us, I think, deserve a little recognition because uh, I don't think our country would be what it is today without the without the veterans. Were you in World? Or were you in the Vietnam War? I was stationed in in California for two years and then Japan for a year and a half in the Air Force. Okay. We had a squadron of C-130s that that flew down into Tonsonute Air Base and operated out of there for 
21 days and then they come back to Tachikawa. Did you fly them? No, no. I ordered parts for them. Uh, I, was, I was a supply man. And we had a, it was called the validation section. If they ordered the part and got it, we didn't hear about it. When they ordered the part and didn't get it, then we had to go to work. Find it somewhere. So you ever watch MASH? Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> was Radar O'Reilly the company to work? Was that kind of a job you had? Yeah, uh, kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, the guy would ask for a bottle of wine and you'd sneak some wine mm -hmm. his way. And <laughs> yeah. Extra Something cigarettes like that. and that sort of thing. Uh, basically, we had <laughs> we had spare parts. Uh, I should probably classify it. I would keep my mouth shut. But ah, we how could, many years has it been? <laughs> Come on. We could find them somewhere. And a lot of times we'd order them from back in the states and that would take a while. Sometimes we, if a plane had just come back in and we had one that was supposed to be leaving, we'd, they called it cannibalizing. We'd just take the part off the plane that just landed and put it on the one that was was leaving so it could get going. Yeah. So what years did you serve? I uh, went in in January 66 and got out in December 69. They actually closed Hachikawa down while I was there. I was supposed to get out. I had extended till June of 70 because... Uh, when they told me I was going to Japan, they turned around and said, you're not going because you don't have two years left. So I said, yeah, I do. I'm going to extend. So I extended for five months. Because you wanted to go to Japan? I wanted to go to Japan. And uh, I wound up getting out in December. They closed the base down. They uh, sent all the C-130s back to the States. They all they all went to reserve and National Guard units. And the... Uh, uh, the biggest thing at Tachikawa was the hospital, but they kept they kept the hospital open. But there was a Tachi only had a one mile runway, so they could only land C-130s and C-124s was the biggest aircraft they could get. Where well, six miles, big. well six miles away was Yokota. <coughs> that's where the jets came in and out. So they just uh, shut down Tachikawa and moved everything to Yokota. Okay, and that's think, still there then. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the hospital I think stayed open till about the mid '70s, and now I guess it's all gone back to the Japanese government. It's all full of houses, from what I understand. Oh, John McDonough is the president of the Central Veterans Association. Been what a year? How uh, is your term? This is my second year now. Uh, actually, I become commander of post 43 the 5th of June we have an officer installation so we're looking for somebody to take over the job as commander of central vets <coughs> yeah Larry you interested <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry he said Larry Kokachki is that how you say that Larry Kokachki 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 okay yeah. that's Kokachki uh, gotta make Make it right, you know. There you go. So <laughs> tell us about your, you know, you're the honored combat veteran, so evidently you did see some combat. I did, yes. Uh, uh, after I, when I got my papers to go to Vietnam, we got uh, orientation and everything down in uh, California. And then I was one of the lucky ones uh, that we got to fly over there instead of, instead of going on a ship. And... Uh, I remember when I, they got my orders mixed around, and I, had, when I got into Vietnam, uh, they, they shipped me up to Cameron Bay, which uh, right on the coast, and uh, it was, you know, as a early 20-year-old young man, you know, you kind of think you know it all. Right. Oh, I've been there. I <laughs> you know, and and I get up there, and and they're trying to straighten out my orders, and they. They uh, they shove an AR-15 in my hands and uh, throw me in a put me in a tent and uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep it till we get this all straight, <laughs> you know. So it was it was quite an eye opening, <laughs> you know. One. And uh, you know a lot of a lot of stuff was going on around there in Cameron Bay. And then they uh, shipped me up to my finally got my order straight and I went to Quinan, Vietnam, and. Uh, I was assigned to it, the 550, 554th uh, uh, amphibious uh, outfit, they call it the Barks, and uh, they were, we, we unloaded ships, uh, uh, each Bark had a 371 diesel engine powering each wheel. Wow. 
so these wheels were were probably about eight maybe it's been so long ago maybe nine feet high each one so there there was they hauled a lot of stuff and we we also landed the fourth infantry division and I believe that was in 60s yeah, that was in 66 later late in 66 I don't remember the correct date but uh, the commanding general of Vietnam was there at the time when I got to I got to see them and we uh, General uh, Westmoreland. So that was quite an honor. Did he speak with you folks? Uh, no, he was he was just in, in charge of the 4th Infantry Division, which was huge, you know, uh, the landing. And uh, <clears throat> where I where I got to uh, to see some combat was we we uh, unloaded all the ships also uh, of all the uh, materials. Uh, that were w would go up into the uh, long highway one, which would make this a target. I mean, for the enemy, right? Correct. They don't Correct. want you to get the materials there. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and everything was was really well guarded, you know. And uh, they also had heli they would they'd have helicopters come in and uh, to fly these supplies uh, off our amphibious vehicles up into the camps where you couldn't drive to. So uh, there was a, a door gunner that was that was uh, uh, getting ETS out of there, which is estimated time of separation. And they asked me if I wanted to fly. And I said, sure. So uh, I got to fly as a door gunner uh, in, into these base camps. And uh, it was quite realistic. You grew up in a hurry. <laughs> I'll bet you did. Yeah. So it was, you know, Vietnam is kind of a touchy subject. I like I like to talk about it. It wasn't always bad there. You know, it wasn't always bad. The weather was bad, you know, and you know, you, you couldn't keep anything dry, you know, and, and uh, so it was, I one of, one of my highlights was uh, I got to I got to meet a uh, a Da Wei, which is captain for uh, in Vietnamese, and uh, I got to spend Christmas with his family. And, you guys keep in touch over the years? Uh, no, and uh, I I didn't speak much Vietnamese. You know, most mostly was just kind of hand signals. Mm -hmm. You know, I did I did pick up some later on. Uh, I got to know the two little girls a little bit. One was. Uh, one was about three and the other one was about five. You know, what amazed me was, was that these people could be happy in what they had. You know, the room we're sitting in now is what, uh, 12 by 14? That was probably the size of their house. The whole house. The whole house, you know. And uh, there was there was no stoves, refrigerators, microwaves, you know. And uh, they had three, usually three, uh, uh, types of uh, food for their meal, and that was rice, rice, and, and rice. More rice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of sometimes it kind of upsets me at times, you know, where you know even my grandson, you know, he'll sit down at the table and you know I don't want to eat this or I don't want to eat that. They don't realize how fortunate they are just to have that type of food on the table. You know, so it's to have any food on the table or any food, yeah. yeah. And a lot of them they didn't even go to school. You know, they were just out on the streets and and. Uh, well, and from what I've read and visited with other Vietnam vets, you ne couldn't necessarily trust them either. Absolutely, absolutely. You never, you never knew uh, one of the one of these little little kids was carrying a a bomb in their shoebox yeah. or something. You know, and just leave it sit. There was a lot of that stuff that went on, you know, a, a lot of that. It was, it was, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. So how long were you over there, Larry? I was there from uh, April of uh, 1966, and I, I got an early out uh, on March 8th because uh, my tour was up. Uh, I was ETSing again, uh, estimated time of separation. Uh, so uh, they gave me about a, a, it was about a month early out. So and that was 
I was really glad to get back. Yeah. You know. I, so you a know, year, about a year. Yeah, it was a, it was a, just a one year tour. And uh, you know to come back and you know and have all of the benefits of what this great United States can give us, you know, and, and let it, you really learn to appreciate your freedom, you know, and you you learn the discipline in the service, you know, which probably uh, I was a little slack of when I went in, <laughs> you know, and it's, that was that was one of the one of the uh, main things that I learned is that discipline that you can that you can use in life, yeah. you know, in so everyday you, natural life. You basically grew up in Vietnam. Pretty much so, yeah, pretty much so. You grow up in a hurry in Vietnam. Yeah, you grow up in a hurry. Went over there a young man and came back well educated <laughs> ready for the world well yeah when I when I got back uh, I I was I was welcomed in Morristown you know uh, they were they were it wasn't like uh, a lot of other people you know where they they were not treated very well you know at, uh, well that's good so you could go down to the local legion oh sure and all that stuff Right, and I and I joined the Legion and the VFW right away. Uh, I've got a little, just about 51 years in the VFW and the Legion, and uh, I participate in the Legion. Uh, uh, some parades when when it's available, when I'm not hunting or fishing. <laughs> but uh, I I like doing that service, you know, uh, for if there's a somebody that has. Uh, passed away and, and been a been a vet, you know, to honor that. So have you been out to see the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in our nation's capital? I have. And the traveling wall that came to Faribault, the replica. I did. That was quite an event, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, when I when we my wife and I traveled to Washington, we had some relation in Washington also, and uh, I could not make the walk make the walk through the wall because it was just too detrimental. Uh, it brought, I wasn't really ready for it, you know, it, brought, yeah. it was it was kind of too soon. I did, my, one of my slogans was that what went on in Vietnam stays in Vietnam. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know some people that were, whose names were on that wall, I would guess. Uh, I, I did not know anybody on the okay. wall. All right. No. Say, Mel, what time is your event on, uh, on Monday? Our event is at 2 o'clock. Okay, 2 o'clock. Yeah. And Shields was 1, right? Uh, the memorial's at 1 o'clock and at 1.45 at the cemetery. That's at Shieldsville? Yes. And then mm -hmm. our event at Faribault begins at 9. 9 at the courthouse. Parade, parade starts at 10. Uh, 15 minutes after the end of the parade is Central Park.